Damien, thank you for joining us today. Um, we want to talk a little bit about some of the exciting things that you're doing from a location standpoint at Banjo and, and how that is integrating and opening up a, a whole new world for developers. But before we get started, can you give us a, a little bit of background on, on Banjo as a company, as an innovator, and, and where you're going from here? Sure. So Banjo, what it is, is it's the world's fastest event detection engine. And what that means is on your mobile device, uh, you can find the events that matter to you that are happening anywhere around the world by the location in which they're happening at. So that could be a breaking news event. It could be a sporting event, a concert, or a conference uh, that you're at. And so what Banjo has been able to do is we've been able to listen for all the publicly available social content from all the social networks around the world. So whether it's Weibo in China, be contacting in Russia or the popular ones here in America, we're able to listen for that content and based on that we're able to detect things that are happening like a breaking news story or like a sporting event and then we're able to match that with the, with the user uh, on their device of the interest that they have and say, hey, did you know about this news event that's going on that may impact you or do you know about the sporting event or one of your favorite artists that's playing in a concert halfway around the world, we're able to show them all the publicly available social photos and videos that are happening at that location. So location is a big thing to Banjo, near and dear to us, and, and something we feel is very important to the end user on an application. Location is the is the hub of, of the content that you deliver, and I've heard you say on a number of uh, occasions that location is an exchange. It's a it's an agreement between your user that it involves trust, it involves value. It's something that you have been able to develop for, uh, and to deal with all of the implications around privacy, around timing, around value add. How have you done it, and what, what advice would you give to developers working in that space and bringing location to the fore of their apps? Yeah, I think the subject of privacy goes hand in hand with location. You can't ignore it. Um, and, and actually, you have to become a champion of it, and of it, I mean, of privacy. And so at Banjo, from day one, we knew that location was going to be something that everyone wasn't used to having uh, on their mobile device and wasn't used to sharing publicly so much, and how do you get them to feel comfortable with it? Well, the one way is you have to be very upfront about it in any kind of development that you do, and you have to tell people how you're using their location. But more importantly, you do have to look at privacy as a form of currency. It's an exchange between you and them, and it, meaning they're giving up some of their privacy, meaning their location, and you're giving them back something of, of equal or greater value in, in their mind. And it's really that trust that you build between yourself as a developer uh, or as an app owner and the end user um, that's going to enable location to be used uh, more than even is used today. Um, so how Banjo was able to do that is, you know, quite simply, I mean, we have a patent around protecting users' privacy because it's so important to us. Uh, our developers will tell you every single day that they're engineering on a new feature, uh, that they look at the privacy implications first and foremost. How, what cu customer information we're using, did the customer give us permission for that, how are we storing it, if we're storing it at all, um, and then I think even more importantly, because we deal with using uh, information that was publicly available from the other social networks, like Twitter and Instagram, that information can change over time. You share a photograph or a post today, a month from now you may decide to change your privacy settings on that post. You may decide that you don't want to share it anymore, whether you delete it, uh, whether you hide it or whether you just decide to share it only with friends. And I think today you see with most so social applications, they don't delete that content. Once they have it, you can find it forever. That's why when someone makes an inappropriate statement and goes back and deletes it, you can go back and find it. But at Banjo, we've done something very unique. We constantly go back through the billions and billions of social posts and we constantly check a user's privacy settings. So if a user does change their privacy settings today for a post that was done a month ago, that post from a month ago is gone and you'll never find it. Not only will you not find it, we don't even have it in our database anymore either. So, and that's how we've gone to the links of protecting a user's privacy and communicating that with the users so that when they're using an application, they know exactly when their location is being used, why it's being used, what data is being used, um, et cetera. And you have to make it in very plain English. No one's going to read a lengthy terms of service and privacy policy. You have to have them. You should have them. So people who do want to read that can understand what you stand for in, with regard to those aspects. But you have to make it what I call like Fisher-Price my first statement. And it has to be so plain uh, to the user of what you're communicating to them as far as how you're using their data and, and their privacy around location. 
We've mentioned the, the currency, the exchange of value for location information. We've talked about how um, Banjo has built on top of social networks to pull that around and to do um, real-time content distribution. Let's look forward a little bit into the emerging technologies around Internet of Things, specifically wearables. You were the launch partner with Samsung for the watch. You also worked with um, Google Gear recently. Banjo is part and parcel of that exchange because of its baseline around location. For developers entering into that space, entering into the wearables development space, it seems that privacy will be even more important than it is in a mobile app. These are these are pieces of clothing, they're watch, they're, they're things that literally travel everywhere with the user in a more personal way than even the phone. Are there real world implications associated with that in terms of my first, my Fisher Price first privacy statement, as well as the um, overt versus uh, the opt-in versus opt-out use of location or obfuscation of data. Yeah. So wearables changes the game, right? I mean, first, mobile was kind of a wearable because we all had it on our person at all times, but it's not necessarily with us all the time. We we can opt to to leave it on the the counter somewhere or turn it off. But when people start to wear things, items of clothing, a, even a watch, you don't take those things off. You forget to turn them off. Um, and because of that, and because of the location implications for those things, first of all, I think location is, is probably the most important thing going forward in, if you look into the future because it has to deal with everything that we as a human being are doing all the time, where we are at, where we're going, and where we've been. But at the same time, you have to message to the user on how you're using that information to give them a better experience. And so I think it has to be explicit, explicit permissions from the user in order to opt in uh, into giving up their, their location. Because it's going to be too easy for them to not understand how that information of a wearable that they have on their person is, is being used. And that's going to get developers in um, a sticky situation with people um, when their content and their information is being used for things that they didn't want it to be used for. And that's always the case with new technology. I mean, we could, you could replay this over and over again with technology that's come over the last 50 years, and you would always hear, you know, that the end user was going to have a problem with this, and they end up getting what I call desensitized to it over time. And I think with location, there'll be a desensi uh, you know, you become desensitized to it to some degree, but because it is now maybe even more personal than giving up your social security number, right? Because it's where you're at. It's where you're located. It's truly in your most intimate moments in life, your wearables are going to be there with you. So how do you protect those moments and stuff? And there's a lot that's been unwritten about that because this is brand new technology. And us as developers, we're just excited to keep breaking through technology barriers and present things that wow the audience. But we really have to think in this case about how do we do that um, and be responsible about it at the same time. It sounds like you would tell developers entering into the space that there are two levels that they have to be aware of. One is perception, end user awareness, education, continuous engagement, and, and feedback. That it doesn't do you any good to assume you have to know. And that the second is technological. Build your, your app and your back end in a way that allows you to respond to the end user in terms of anonymization, obfuscation, and even deletion if necessary. Is that accurate? Uh, totally accurate. I think from a development standpoint, I, I would add one caveat to both those is we have to be beware of ourselves because what happens is you get into the moment of discovering something and you find that you can use certain pieces of data or you can do certain things that would be so cool. But the audience may not understand that yet, right? It, they're so new to this type of technology. Uh, and you can't just go ahead and beat the consumer over the head because they're not going to get it that way either. You have to be able to have that, that two-way uh, communication, and it can't be difficult. So I always tell developers right now, you have to design your system, your architecture, and your applications uh, for protecting data, but also have a way of, of deleting data easily, right, and verifying that it's deleted, how you collect your data, making sure that the structure can scale, and making sure that you can make quick changes to it based on user feedback. I always say that when you're developing wearable type technology or location-based technology, you should always develop it with people in your circle of user testing that have no idea 
about what's going on with location or wearables because those are the people you're going to hear the largest objection mm -hmm. from. And that makes it easier. Our peers are going to always tell us that's really cool. Even our own family might pat us on the back and say, well, that's really neat. But those people that don't know us and don't know this technology, they're the ones that we should be listening to because their objections and each to their opinions, that's going to make the product a lot better. Visit appalliance.org to access resources and join a global network of developers.